Hey guys, welcome back to the channel, Daughter of Increase. My name is Nate Denise, for those of you who are new to the channel, and I post new videos every Tuesday and Thursday all about my faith, God, Christ, and expanding the kingdom of God. And though it is Saturday, that means I have a book review for you guys, and I told you guys Saturdays is where I would do my book reviews. And this book review is one that I'm like super excited. I'm sorry I moved my glass out the way, because this is a book that I read, I loved, and I'm actually currently reading this with my sister and doing the study. And that is going to be Lies Young Women Believe by Nancy DeMoss Wilgameth and Donna Grush. This is a part of a series, and this is the second book in a series. And I think the series is called Lies We Believe. Um, that is the series. I'm sorry, I had to figure out what the name of the series was. But like I said, this was the second book. So I'm going to show you guys all of the books that are out. Um, so first we have Lies Women Believe by Nancy DeMoss Wilgameth. This was the first book. The second book that came out for that was the Lies Young Woman Believe by Nancy DeMoss Wilgameth as well as Donna Grush. Third book in this series to come out was actually Lies Men Believe and this was written by Nancy's husband. His name is Robert Wilgameth, which I think is so awesome. And the fourth one, which I'm hoping is not the last one. I hope they come up with, like, one more for little boys, um, or at least two more. But this one is Lies Girls Believe, and this one is written by Donna Gresh, but obviously it's checked over by Nancy, um, and this was the one that recently came out. Um, so yeah, we have this. Along with that, we do have two Bible studies. I'm hoping they come out with more Bible studies for the other two books, but Lies Women Believe has a Bible study, and Lies Young Woman Believe has a Bible study. So... I love all of these books. I think these books are amazing. I've only read one completely. But um, I just, I love the way they look. If you guys can see, up here you have the apple hair. You have a mix of a Granny Smith with a Macintosh. You have the apple over here with two bite marks and then a candy apple for little girls. So I think it's like the cutest thing ever. But this video is going to focus specifically on one of the books within a series. And that is going to be on the Lies Young Women Believe by Nancy DeMoss, Wilgameth, and Donna Grash. Now, I am going to tell you right now, off the bat, this is a 5 out of 5 read from, 5 out of 5 star read for me. I adored everything about this book. This book really helped me learn so much about myself. This book really helped me to open my eyes and understand that I was still struggling with some things that happened in my past, um, and helped me to bring those things to the forefront so that God could really get, um, to the core and root of it and really helped me get over it. I love this. I am still currently reading this book with my sister. I think my sister and I only got to chapter 3. But um, if you guys can see, I have gone through this entire book by myself, way ahead of my sister, and read this book. This book is amazing. So on the back it says, um, Have you been deceived? Through a nationwide survey in an in-depth discussion groups. Oh, and in-depth discussion groups, Nancy DeMoss Wilgameth and Donna Gresh have listened carefully to the heart of your de generation. Here's some of what they heard. It seems like I've been struggling with depression forever. I'm, I always feel like I'm not good enough. I couldn't live without texting and social media. The whole wife and mom thing is overrated and no longer cool. Trying to figure out what is true can be hard, especially today. In this updated version of the best-selling lies young women believe, Nancy and Donna expose 25 of the lies most commonly believed by today's teen girls. You'll hear real-life stories from young women just like you and learn how Nancy and D Donna have overcome lies they believed. Best of all, they'll show you how to be set free by the truth. Sorry about that. But, um, yeah, so they go through 25 of the lies, and I'm going to run through them really quick. So... The, the, okay, this book is broken down into three parts. So the first part is the landscape of lies, which it talks about the deceiver who was the enemy, um, the deceived, and where do the lies get power to destroy our lives, and then it talks about the truth. So it's basically giving you some information on the enemy, how we're deceived, and then it's telling you the truth about like the word and what God says and all that. Then part two goes into all of the lies that young women believe. So some of the lies are like lies about God, how he is not enough, how he's not really involved in your life. Lies about Satan, how, um, you know, some people say we've never been exposed to satanic activities, which is a lie. We're honestly exposed to it on a daily basis. Um, lies about yourself, how like beautiful girls are worth more and you have to perform to be loved and accepted, which I think that's a lie a lot of us have believed as young girls um, in some form or fashion and even to this day still believe, even though we say we don't believe that, if that makes sense. Um, there's lies about sexuality, how it's okay to date whoever you feel like dating, how um, you're not really having sex if you're not having penetration. Then there's lies about relationships, how um, you wouldn't be lonely if you had friends, lies about your faith, how like 
uh, everyone at your church is judging you. And I'm not even gonna lie, when I was a younger kid, I used to think everyone at church was judging me. Um, and it just, that's just what I believed happened in the church. Um, there's lies about sin, how some people can't overcome sin. Lies about the media, how it bene the benefits of constant media use outweighs the harm. Sorry if you guys hear that hammering and banging there in the basement. I so apologize. The beeping with the smoke detector is not going off because I did manage to try to fix that. Um, it will beep later on, but for some reason, I just have, the landlords just have to do something with the wiring because they're like out of whack. We didn't change the batteries multiple times, but anyways, um, and then there's lies about the future, um, about how, like what you do now doesn't affect your future. And then part three is about how you can overcome those lines. So how to stop fueling them lies, them lies, how to stop fueling the lies, how to find freedom from the lies. And then the truth that sets you free. And then there's like welcome and all that, a pull out section and all that. You guys, this book was amazing. Um, so I guess I can go through some. I don't. I don't even know. Like you guys, is there are like little questions and quizzes in the book that I actually like answered. So like this one says, selecting one pair, circle the word or set of words that reflect how you feel or respond the most. So like the first one is like relaxed or totally stressed out. For me, I put totally stressed out because I feel that way sometimes. Um, the second one was like happy to be single or gotta have a guy. I was in between. I didn't need a guy, but I also wasn't happy to be single. You know, good with what you got or ugly. For me, I put ugly. Um, forgiven or guilty. And that one right there really got me. Because I know I'm, for I'm forgiven, but sometimes I still feel guilty. And um, that's not how it works. And I'm, go I'm going to make a whole video on that and breaking that down. But this is just going to be a specifically a book review. So if you have any questions, just leave them down below. And I'm going to have a second video coming. But, um, you know, authentic or hypocritical, in control of my tech world, or would die without texting and social media. It was just a little pop quiz to see um, where you are mentally, I guess, for a little kid. Um, and I don't like I'm, I'm really trying to find a way to review this book because this book was amazing. Here it talks about the definition of lie. So a lie is a false statement with deliberate intent to deceive an inaccurate or false statement. Um, an imposter. A lie is an imposter of the truth, which I love that they said that. And when I said truth, they put truth in capital with a capital T because truth is referring to God, like the word of God. Um, and then it says, we often don't detect lies because they camouflage themselves so well. And that is so true. I don't know how many lies I've been told that I always thought were truthful just because of how well they sounded or how well they seemed even though they were still imposters and not of the word of God. And if you don't know the word of God for yourself, you can be easily influenced by lies and not realize they're lies. Um, it says that Satan used a clever combination of half-truths and falsehood posing as truth. And that's something that the enemy does a lot. He will do a 50-50 thing. Like, if it's 50-50, that's when we find ourselves in trouble. Because we know right from wrong, but then we believe in those gray areas that allow us to be tempted by those lies be tempted by the enemy and his schemes and this book plays no games like it dives and it says that all satan's lies are intended to destroy lies about our bodies our physical beauty their obvious in invitations to self-destruction which i agree with um it says learn to run from anything that would send you in a direction that is contrary to god's will and as a teen i'm not even gonna lie i didn't i didn't study the word unless i was in church and i mentioned this before as much as i love the word of god as a teen i didn't feel compelled to study the word unless i was in church there was no going home to study the word of god there was no bible study at home i would go to church on wednesdays for bible study choir rehearsals was on thursday fridays was youth night saturday was dance rehearsal i was in church all literally all day every day except sundays I mean, Mondays and Tuesdays, I was in church, you guys, back in the day, like when I was younger, literally Wednesday through Sunday, I was in church. Like I said, Wednesdays was Wednesday night prayers and Bible studies. Then Thursdays was choir rehearsal. And because I was, we was in a youth choir and my mom was in the adult choir, we was in choir rehearsal all day on night and choir rehearsal then turned into a whole service, you know, taking demons and stuff out. Like my church back then was crazy. Um, and then Fridays we would have, um, youth nights at the church and then saturdays i was on dance ministry so we had dance rehearsals in the morning and then sundays you was in church all day morning afternoon to the night <laughs> like you was in church all day but for me studying the word of god for myself wasn't something that i wanted to do i was all into going to the youth church and doing the sunday schools i was into that and i, I always had a passion for it but there was no, it, it, it's kind of like my flame died out when I left the church building. Um, I felt like in the building, my flame was lit. And then when I left the building, there wasn't, I wasn't going home to study the word of God. I wasn't being fed the word of God. So I wouldn't be able to tell 
those half truths and those half lies from the full truth in the word of God, which is probably what messed me up personally um, in my college years, because in my younger and teenage years, I didn't care to look at the word for myself. Um, and that's pretty much what a lot of kids do. So let's just flip ahead. I'm going to try to, you know, talk about some things. So we're going to dive into the lies. So this one is um, lies about God. So let's see. I don't want to talk about that one because that one is pretty simple. <laughs> they talk about how, like, God is not enough um, to some people, how God should fix my problem. And that, that's one thing. Okay, so the third lie that they talk about is how some people believe that God should fix their problems. And a lot of the times, I know when I was younger, I would think, okay, if I did something wrong, God would fix it. If I did something wrong, an angel would come. And, like, literally, this was my mentality. I would believe that an angel would come to make it right. But that is not God's... <laughs> job that his job is not to make it right he does make it right because he is a loving father but um that's not his job my job is to not do wrong my job is to know the truth from the lie but again as you, when you're in your teen years and your younger years you don't know that now i am so grateful that there are some kids out there who are dedicated to the word of god we need more people like that i have run across a lot of younger kids here on youtube that have such a great dedication to the word of god and i when i watch their videos because i do watch some of their videos i'm awestruck because i feel like i wish i was like that in my younger years now granted the things that i experienced and did back in those times helped me now to minister to people but you know i know some kids nowadays don't care about the word of god i've ran across some kids who just don't care um this is the fourth lie god is just like my father and i think that's something a lot of younger kids um battle with they struggle with relating god to their earthly father and god the father is very different from your earthly father so i really love it just says learn to relate to your earthly father through god rather than relating to god through your earthly father which i think is so amazing like this this book really makes you think and though it is geared towards younger women for me personally, it allowed me to be my younger self. It allowed me to um, bring things to the forefront. I know as I'm reading this with my sister, I'm sharing some of the experience and some of the things that I thought of as a kid with her. And she's learning from them. Um, so, you know. Um, they talk about lies about Satan. So, okay. So, lie number five is that everything bad that happens is spiritual warfare, which is not true. Um, now, sometimes bad things that happen to us are a direct assault from Satan, but not all bad things that happen to us are a direct undeserved assault from Satan and his minions. Satan is not the only enemy of our souls. It says many bad things that happen are brought on by our own choices. The greatest opponents to your Christian growth is you. That right there for me was like, excuse my language, damn. Like when I was reading this, I was like, damn, that's it's so true. But many people don't understand it they don't want to agree with it they don't want to understand that everything is not spiritual warfare um it's just not there are some things that you do that just you have to deal with the consequences and every sin has a consequence whether it's unintentional or intentional there's a consequence regardless but um though the enemy will sometimes attack you a attack to you attack you there are things that just happen because you made the wrong choice it has nothing to do with the enemy it has to do with your con um sorry it has to do with you making the choice to sin um and then you having to deal with the consequences it, it, sh it is what it is um it says sometimes the bad things that happen are brought on by the influence of the falling world in which we live in um so i mean <sighs> Okay, it says that the cos this co okay, so it says the Greek word cosmos refers to the order or the system of organized culture apart from God. So then it says the cosmos, which is kind of like the culture apart from God, um, attacks our appetites and our eyes and feeds our pride. So I know for me in high school, I saw a lot of stuff and I wanted to be down, you know, with people. Um, I wasn't popular, but I also wasn't down with the losers if that makes sense like i was in between i was cool with the popular kids i was cool with the nerds i was cool with everybody like friendly with everyone but a part of me always wanted to be down with the popular kids and um it it was hard you know there were some things they did that i i grew attracted to because it looked cool 
um, and I saw that they weren't getting in trouble for it. So I'm like, okay, they are not getting in trouble for it. Maybe I can get away with it too. It didn't work that way for me. I got in trouble with half the stuff that I did. But this book allows you to understand that. Um, it says, even if Satan is the source of your problems, you still have a personal responsibility. So, yeah, Satan does do certain things to get you tempted. Um, but it's your responsibility not to be tempted. Not to indulge in those temptations. Not to allow your pride to um, rise up in you. And, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm going to try not to, again, to go through this entire book because it's so long. It's... I, don't, I, don't, I, I purposely didn't even mark things because um, it's, it's just so much in this book. Like every page you turn, I have highlights, just highlights all through. And what I like is that this is very scriptural based. Every page you turn, there's at least three or five scriptures to um, explain something or contradict a lie. Um, every page you turn is questions to make you wonder. They um, refer to other people that you can actually go look up and, and research for yourself. There's uh, little, like, quizzes that they did, little polls they did. They give you different things that you can do. So here on page 111, this talks about the lies about relationship. There's five ways to cultivate authentic faith. The first one is to invite your youth pastor's wife to follow you on Instagram. I know for me, back in those times, I would not have wanted my leaders to follow me on Instagram. No, I wasn't posting reckless stuff, but just the stuff that I was posting, I wouldn't feel comfortable with anyone from my church following me on Instagram. Nowadays, my pastors are following me. It doesn't bother me because I make sure that what I'm posting is not reckless. It's not, um, it's, it's still pleasing to God, whatever I post. So that was the first thing they said, which I think is amazing for young kids to do. The second thing it says to text at least one godly word of encouragement to a friend each day. As much as these teenagers are texting people, what are they texting? You know, they're not texting encouragement. They're texting about sex. They're texting about fights. They're gossiping. They're talking about TV shows that don't do anything for their lives. Like, text, you know, it's a godly word. And that's something that I personally started doing. I think last year I started texting words of encouragement to my sisters from church, um, to the ladies in the group. Like, I was doing it not daily, but at least three times a week I was texting a godly word of encouragement. The third thing, it says, use your blog as a place for prayer requests and praise reports. Now, that's something... I think a lot of kids probably won't really do. Um, blogging is very much one of those things that is fun for a lot of people. A lot of people come on YouTube. A lot of people want to be Instagram famous. But use your social media in general to help spread the word of God. I know for me, I used to complain a lot. Like, social media for me was a place where I could just go and just explain and explode my emotions and that's terrible one because you're putting everybody in your business and two it's not helping you're just making things worse nowadays when i post on social media i make sure that it's encouragement encouraging whether it's a scripture or something you know related to christ or just something motivational i'm making sure that whatever i'm posting is edifying to people and it's not um making myself look bad nor being a misrepresentation of who god is nor causing any pain to anyone that i know um, the fourth thing they said is to put your favorite verses as your Instagram avatar. I don't do that for me personally. I just have scriptures and stuff all throughout my room, like literally all over my wall. You guys can see scriptures, prayers, inspirational quotes. I like that. And then it says, um, create a board of your favorite Christian books and start pinning. And a lot of these things are related to kids like nowadays and this generation, cause you know, Pinterest is amazing and Instagram and blogging and those things are crucial. But, um, you know. Now, I do want to specifically talk about one thing, and I'm sorry again that this video is so long. I, it's hard to really talk, you know, break this down. But um, chapter 11, lies about the media. No, is that it? Sorry. It's actually chapter 5, lies about Satan. Um, that's going to be on page 61. I'm actually going to go to it because I do want to talk about that because it's something that I feel weighs heavy on me personally, especially with things that I've recently seen. So it says, lie number six is, I've never been exposed to satanic activities. So then it asks us questions of, have you ever looked at or read your horoscope? Have you ever participated in psychic activities? Have you ever did palm reading? Have you ever played a video game or watched a movie that portrayed demonic forces or witchcraft in a positive way? And then they start talking about... Um, uh, what was the, what's the show? Uh, vampires and, um, what is it called? Okay, so they saw, okay, here it is. I'm sorry, I was trying to find the paragraph. Um, but, okay, I'm just gonna read it because, yeah, this video is going on almost 25 minutes. Um, so it says, 
It's easy to become comfortable with evil when we're exposed to it casually or repeatedly. Exposure plus a lack of awareness of what you're really exposed to can be dangerous. Then it says, anything that presents characters of darkness as heroes, anything that incites curiosity or encourages experimentation and exploration of things related to the occult is dangerous and should be avoided. To be entertained or enamored by witchcraft is to be lured into alliance with Satan himself. And then it talks about yoga as well, how yoga is rooted in the religious belief and practices of Indian religion and then they talk about the actual breakdown of yoga how yoga comes from the ancient Sanskrit word yog which means to yoke um, and then how the positions of yoga were created to worship gods now some people might not agree with that there I personally used to love doing yoga I haven't done yoga in, in a while just because I lost the passion to do it it has nothing to do with the whole religion thing um, but it does make me think every now and then when I want to do yoga um, but the whole thing, so here it talks about, um, we're looking for the good in them. Harry Potter, a good wizard. Team Edward, he's a good vampire. Um, the Walking Dead, like, it's making zombies, you know, it, it's crazy. So, for me, I know recently I was watching the show Lucifer on Netflix, and I know Lucifer came on TV. I forgot what channel, but, um, it came on TV, and I never watched it on TV until it was on Netflix. Excuse me, guys, I'm thirsty. <laughs> and if you're wondering... This is my lavender vanilla um, iced coffee. Love this stuff so much. Homemade, by the way. But, um, you know, Lucifer is a show about Lucifer. And a lot of you guys probably know what I'm talking about if you go on Netflix and look Lucifer up. I literally binge watched the first two seasons. And I had to stop myself. I haven't watched season three or season four or have whatever many. I haven't watched it since because I came to the realization that I was starting to like Lucifer. And it sounds ridiculous that I'm saying it out loud, but it's shows like that that try to paint satanic and demonic beings in good light. Um, that we don't realize it and it causes spiritual problems in us. I know for me as a, as a kid, I enjoyed vampires. It sounds crazy, but I was attracted to vampires. I liked watching vampires. I was watching Blade. I was watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Like, I was watching uh, Sabrina the Teenage Witch. It has nothing to do with vampires, but, you know, I was watching that. And Disney Channel even has, like, you know, um, Twitches, the, the twin witches. Like, and these things, we understand that these things are not right. The Bible tells us that, the, you know, these are satanic things and they're not good. I used to read my horoscope all the time. You know, I mean, my horoscope half the time was correct but like i would actually read my horoscope now i'm not one of those people that read my horoscope and try to live it out completely like i don't, I don't do that um but i used to read my horoscope and i never thought anything of it until i read this book and i was like wow that is considered uh what's the word oh jesus it's, it's something in the Bible. if i can remember the word i will put it on the screen hopefully if somebody knows you can mention it down below but i know there's a scripture about um horoscopes and looking at the stars and all that it's the actual scripture in the bible i'm gonna look for it and put it on the screen but um as a teenager you don't think about that stuff and then you don't have adults to tell you right from wrong you know when when teenagers go to church a lot of the pastors are not preaching to the teens you know when you have youth services a lot of the times even when you have youth services they're not even preaching to the teens i've been to plenty of youth services back in my day where it's just like okay yeah i'm ready for the preacher to preach and they're preaching way over my head to adults like what but this book here really opened my eyes, you know? Um, but yeah, like I said, I was really getting into Lucifer. Like, I, I was, I was, I was happy, you guys. I was like, oh my God, Lucifer is so sweet. And you know, they had the angels, you know, angels are neither good nor bad. They do whatever God says, period. But you know, it was just like, I had to check myself for a minute. And then I heard a whisper in my ear, which I knew it was God telling me to stop watching it because... I was actually becoming invested in watching this show. And I mean, he's Lucifer. And a lot of kids don't think like that. They watch, um, what's the name of the daggone show with Edward and all that? They watch the, the vampires and the werewolves and they don't think anything of it. But then you're opening yourself up to these demonic beings. And though they look cool, you start to think that what they're doing is cool. And then you start to do things that are completely opposite or contrary to the word of God. And now you're stuck in a pit because you have to try to figure out how to fix it. But nobody's there to tell you to fix it. So now you go even deeper or you're now stuck in that one spot. Like, there's a lot. Like, I don't know if you guys heard that song, um, Timmy Turner. Uh, who even wrote that song? I don't know. 
but it's but yeah, it's, a, it's a song called Timmy Turner and I used to enjoy the song so much but one day there was a whisper and I know that was God saying to listen to the lyrics of the song and the lyrics of the song are so demonic and so creepy and so just you know that is the work of Satan in them lyrics Timmy Timmy like I'm actually going to look the words up for you guys because unfortunately a lot of the times when we listen to music and I know this happens a lot in um with people of color we don't listen to the lyrics we hear the beat we get attracted to the beat we dance to the beat I'm going to read this lyrics, the lyrics to you guys, okay? I'm not going to say the curse words, but it's Timmy Tim. Now, mind you, Timmy Turner is a show that I liked from the Fairly Odd Parents. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, um, I'll insert a picture here of Timmy Turner. That's a cute little cartoon. I enjoyed it. Now, granted, that's probably another show that, you know, people don't really pay attention to. But it says, Timmy Timmy Turner, he be wishing for a burner, meaning a gun. To kill everybody walking, he knows that his soul's in the furnace. Fine B on B E T, Hottie Wallen. She effing, that's what it says on B E T, Wallen for Wallet. Killing everybody walking. He knows that his soul's in the furnace. And it literally repeats. And when I actually sat and listened to the words, I to this day cannot listen to the song. Because you're basically telling me that he sold his soul to the devil basically and that he wants to kill everyone for no reason how does that make sense but then you have teenagers who don't think about that they just you know dancing at parties not listening to the lyrics and when you're not listening correctly to the things and you're just letting the music feed you that's a problem and keep in mind satan if i'm not mistaken was an angel of music if i'm wrong let me know but i think i'm right <laughs> um angel of music so you know when you listen to a lot of these lyrics you know and a lot of people don't do that so i like that this book pointed out that um we are exposed on a daily basis to satanic activities be it through mu music be it through tv shows video games i mean think about fortnite people play fort like fortnite like it's nothing but why are you killing people why you got all these type of demonic looking creatures like We don't think about this stuff. We literally don't. And even now, when my son, um, he's only five years old, and he watches things on YouTube, but I'm like, what are you watching? Nope, switch that. We're not watching that. Like, no, not today. And he'll get mad because he's like, but mom, no. There are certain things I don't want my son to watch. And as much as there's other kids out there watching those things, I am now more aware that a lot of these things that I thought were just little cute things, they're not really cute. They're actually more satanic and demonic than we realize, and we don't take time to think about it so lies young women believe as much as this is geared towards teen girls i highly suggest even grown women read this especially if you dealt with any type of trauma or situation in your past this will help you bring it to the forefront this will and equally the bible study now i personally haven't written in a bible study i got two copies for me and my sister um like i've underlined some things and highlighted but i haven't written in it just because i know that this is something i might want to use with other young girls and i might want to make copies of so i'm no longer going to start actually writing in my um books okay so so yeah i still have like the bookmark here so me and my sister are only on chapter four <laughs> we've only done chapters one through three so far but um great bible study my sister actually enjoys it and this actually makes her think um, it actually makes her ask me questions, um, and it really allows her to start to grow her own relationship with God, especially because there's parts in here that they call, um, what is it called? Pray about it, where they give you like a prompt. So it's like, Jesus, thank you for being the truth. Help me learn more about you through your word and apply your truth to my life. I'm learning to replace the lies in my life with the truth that and then they give you space two pages of space to continue on and write your own prayer so y'all got you you know how i'm all about them prayer prompts that help you to pray when you don't know what to pray um so i i know this video was so long and i apologize but it's so hard to talk about such a book such a book it's so hard to talk about a book that has such a great impact and not a lot of people have read it um i highly recommend this for both teen girls i highly recommend this for grown women I'm about to be 28 years old. I read this while I was 27. It has impacted me 
immensely and i i recommend the duo amazingly if you are a mom if you are a big sister if you are a cousin a best friend or whatever and you're looking to do something with your your younger child or your younger cousin or whatever this has one helped me and my sister to become a little closer me and my sister are like 10 plus years apart i'm about to be 28 my sister just turned 14 we're 14 years apart yeah 14 years apart did I do that math right? 28? 14? <laughs> I think. 14, right? Yeah. Um, we're 14 years apart. So, there's a big gap between me and her. So, it's not much that we can relate to, especially since my generation is very different from her generation right now. But this book has really allowed us to really discuss some things and, um, you know, speak. And again, if you're a woman, you want to get lies, one believe, get it. I haven't read it yet because I think that I want to read... Um, the girl version first, which is Lies Girl Believe. I mean, if Lies Young Women Believe wrecked me, I can only imagine what Lies Girls Believe can do to me. And then both, having read both the younger versions and then going to read the grown woman book, come on. So, do I recommend it? Yes, five out of five star rating for me, from me, and I, what more can I say? I'm sorry this video was long, but at least there was no beeping from the smoke detector going on. So I'm going to try to make sure that I reset these smoke detectors every time I do this, because apparently that's the only way that it works. Um, we've changed the batteries. Two of the five uh, smoke detectors in my house are hardwired, so they don't use batteries. So I think I just have to reset them a lot, because as you can hear downstairs, they're banging, they're doing work, and the door. So I'm going to end this video here. If you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down below. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye!